Leadership Skills Part 2. To be effective in a charge nurse or leadership management role, you have got to cultivate some core knowledge and skills. By understanding the motivation concepts and basic human needs, you uh, will be much better prepared to be a leader. Compare the basic needs of Maslow and Howlett's hierarchies. Think about why it's important that basic needs be met before the higher ones can, can be met. So this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs and Howlett's hierarchy of work motivators. <coughs> Excuse me. Maslow's is adapted to assist first line LPNs to understand the motivation of the team and its members. All levels are considered needs of employees in the employment setting. Remember that all behavior is internally motivated. You can encourage the motivation your nursing assistants already possess. If nursing assistants can see that doing a good job is in their best interest and helps them meet personal needs, they're going to work harder to meet the goals of their employing agency. Motivation is part of the role of a charge nurse. You help meet the needs of nursing assistants because it's going to help you retain staff, but you do this um, by encouraging internal motivation, by channeling the motives of the employees to meet the organizational goals, and reward desired behaviors. <coughs> Excuse me. Verbal, direct, and clear communication is going to spell out objectively what it is that you're trying to communicate. And you also need to role model. Make sure that you use I instead of you because <coughs> it helps um, decrease the defense mode of the employee. If you bring a problem to your manager, you also need to bring a suggestion for change. Encourage verbal communication from your nursing assistants. Nonverbal body language is going to, or nonverbal communication is body language. Make sure that you review all written messages before you send them. And when you're on the phone and you're communicating, make sure that you are to the point and that you have all the necessary and required information prior to dialing the number. <coughs> Problem solving is part of being a leader and you need to know how to do this appropriately. Team building is definitely a very important part of being a leader. The better team you have, the better um, outcomes you're going to have. How do you get your employees or those people who are working for you or at your direction to perform to their best ability? Stress management. The um, LVN or LPN charge nurse needs to learn how to detect stress in the clinical environment. Where's the best place to start when detecting stress in the clinical environment? And how do you control stress? Well, you start by altering how you think. Realize that it's not the situation, but your reaction to the situation that will create the stress. Change your irrational thinking to a more rational way of thinking. 
Irrational thinking is our side conversation with ourselves that often incites us to respond inappropriately. And specific knowledge and skills required for leadership. You have to have those specific occupational or clinical skills. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to know how to perform them. They include using the nursing process. Solid clinical skills are essential for leadership. You have to have knowledge of your role in the nursing process and visible expertise in the clinical skills. Demonstrate skills to nursing assistants as necessary and show that the client care comes first. Be aware of requirements of federal and state laws and accrediting agencies and make sure that your documentation is specific. It's objective. In other words, avoid subjective comments and personal judgments in your documentation. Effective documentation is the basis for reimbursement and it's very important because it's a part of the legal record that can go to court. Incomplete or questionable documentation could also result in a citation for the facility. And be aware of legal aspects and regulations. Again, that Nurse Practice Act, healthcare facility policies and procedures, state and federal regulations, published standards of your organization and the codes of conduct. Maybe it's the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, or OBRA, of 1987, and the Joint Commission, which is an independent accreditation agency. You also have to have good organizational skills. that are These are necessary to function in the organization that delivers health care. You need to have good time management. It's more about management and less about time. Your ability to, um, to manage time is going to help you organize tasks and allow you to be successful as a charge nurse. The nursing process is going to be the tool that will help you get organized. Continuous quality improvement. Focus is a quality of care. Quality is indicated by patient outcomes. It involves all departments of the healthcare facility, including long term care. Conflict resolution. Conflict is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's an opportunity for growth and learning. The presence of conflict can point out the need for change in an organization. When conflicts are out in the open, the opportunity exists to settle issues. Conflict resolution will involve people settling their differences. Conflict can occur when two or more people interact at any time. Unsettled conflicts can grow slowly into something much larger that might be more difficult or impossible to resolve. And human relations skills. This is the ability to get along with and relate to people. Leaders who have human relations skills are going to get the job done with style and tact without sacrificing quality. Nursing assistants are going to value their leader's style more and be more effective in reaching the goals of the unit. Because success depends on what is accomplished through others, the ability to relate well to others is crucial. This is the most important skill to possess. We also look at anger management. This fosters belonging, affiliation, and recognition using assertive communication. Be an active listener. Anger is a cue that something is wrong. Seek input to find solutions to problems. Encourage self-evaluation and attempt to help nursing assistants reach their potential. Performance evaluation. Sometimes the thought of a performance evaluation can send shivers up the spine of the person doing the evaluating as well as of the person who is being evaluated. OBRA mandates regular evaluations of nursing assistants. 
The purpose of evaluation is to encourage personal and career growth, and it should be constructive. It's not a platform to air likes or dislikes. Uh, you know, I don't like you because this is what you do, or I don't like the way you did that because this way is better. And I mean, it, it's not a platform for personal attacks. It is a platform to help improve the quality of the work that the person is being evaluated is doing. Identify and encourage positive behaviors during evaluation. And identify behaviors that need improvement and provide feedback as close to the event as possible. It's much like training a, a dog. If you are disciplining the animal because they were barking at an inappropriate time, but you don't do this until 30 minutes later, they have no idea what they're being disciplined for. You've got to provide the feedback at the time the incident is occurring or as close to as possible. Objectively point out consequences as of negative behaviors and encourage the development of employees who will meet the facility's objectives and fulfill the mission statement. Empowering team members and encouraging personal growth and development of confidence is only going to improve the function of the facility. It can be very rewarding for the charge nurse and provide opportunities to be successful in new situations. Make sure that as the charge nurse you're always praising successes. Try and plan for educational opportunities provide challenging assignments, and encourage problem solving. The charge nurse can encourage the personal growth and development of the team members by his or her own personal character. <laughs>